welcome to the Good Enough Club and today we are going to talk about the books that I loved in sixth grade and rereading them this year. In sixth grade I had Mrs. Gerard and I maybe read ahead too far in the book that we were reading in class. Uh, she actually just gave me the whole book list of what she normally pulled from for her curriculum. And the books that were on that list have stayed with me. It's been like 20 years. I decided I kind of want to figure out if they're as good as I remember. I hope so. Otherwise I'm going to be really sad. <laughs> I've already reread three of the books in my little stack. Here are the books that I happen to already own that are on the list. I've already reread three of them. So the first book is Island of the Blue Dolphins by Scott O'Dell. You can see I got it for a cool 49 cents, probably at a thrift store. This story is about a girl who gets left behind by her entire community on an island and she has to use the skills that she has learned to survive. Um, throughout this, she has to battle with a pack of wild dogs uh, that live on the island and have killed her brother. Spoiler alert. She has to contend with some super serious weather. She tries to get off the island and finds that she really can't be successful at that. She also has to overcome some taboos from her community of things that are women's work versus men's work. Throughout the story, she really only has two friends. Uh, one is a dog. The other is a girl who visits the island with some seal hunters. It is based roughly on a true story and it is a Newbery Award winner. It is very simplistic writing, but it's so good. It is so good. Um, probably the first book that I ever read that was about surviving in weird circumstances. Totally holds up. The next book I read was The Westing Game by Ellen Raskin, another Newbery Award winner. And this one is about a group of 16 people in this small town who are named as heirs to this huge fortune of the guy who basically founded the town. And they have to play a game to figure out who murdered this guy. The little blurb on the back says, Forging ahead through blizzards, burglaries, and bombings, the game is on. Only two people hold all of the clues. One of them is a Westing heir and the other is you. So it's not like an interactive book per se, but I can see how, given the audience who it's aimed toward, like it would be a kid's natural inclination to write out all of the clues and kind of figure out what is happening. Um, but it's not so simplistic of a solution that it's not fun to read as an adult. It was a really good time. I, the next book on my list is the one that kind of inspired the idea to do this mini TBR, and that is because Lois Lowry actually just came to town. And there's a scene in that book where and I knew she was coming, and I wanted to make sure that I did a at least one reread of a book before I went and saw her. She was super funny <laughs> and the um, gal who was in conversation with her, another author who's local here to Denver, she would ask Lois questions and Lois would start to answer but then would have all these great little stories to plug in along the way. Gathering Blue is the second book in the Giver Quartet. I actually read this one before reading The Giver and I think that's totally reasonable. I don't think you have to read The Giver before you read Gathering Blue and there's no character overlap between the two books. Um, Gathering Blue starts out with our main character Kira and her being almost kicked out of her community who then the elders decide to keep her on because they want her special skill that she has 
which is being able to have some like really cool skills with um, thread embroidery and along the way Kira figures out that maybe what she's been told all throughout her life had, is maybe not what reality is. So she does start to question things as it goes along. It, it does end on a little bit of a cliffhanger. And to be honest, I haven't read the last two books in the quartet yet. Next. I have a couple of books are ones that I have not reread yet. Um, the first one being Walk Two Moons by Sharon Creech. Is this another Newberry? It is another Newberry. The summary on the back of my copy says, 13-year-old Salamanca Tree Hill, known as Sal, is traveling from Ohio to Idaho with her grandparents in search of her mother. Along the way, she tells them the story of Phoebe Winterbottom, Win Winterbottom? who received mysterious messages, met a potential lunatic, and whose mother disappeared. Beneath Phoebe's story is Sal's story and that of her mother, who left one day for Idaho and has not returned. Sal has less than a week to get to Idaho in time for her mother's birthday and bring her back. Despite her father's warning that she is fishing in the air, Sal knows this journey is the only chance she has for reuniting her family. The next is a super classic, probably a lot of people's first sci-fi type of book, um, and that would be A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Lingle. The back says, it was a dark and stormy night. That's what it says on the very top, right here. Out of this wild night, a strange visitor comes to the Marie house and begs Meg, her brother Charles Wallace, and their friend Calvin O'Keefe on a most dangerous and extraordinary adventure, one that will threaten their lives and our universe. Wrinkle in Time is the first book in Madeline Lingle's Time Quintet. And I think I've only actually read this one. Maybe I should do a video of reading the rest of series of books that I've only read one book. The next two books are actually by the same author who I remember going to go see his author talk when I was in sixth grade. And I remember him talking about how in one of the books that isn't one that's in this stack, but it was also super good. Um, like he went and lived in the streets of Mexico and didn't even wear shoes. And I also remember him talking about how he and his wife had a pet bear, right? Totally memorable. And that author is Ben Michelson, author of Touching Spirit Bear. At 15, Cole Matthews has been fighting and stealing for years. The punishment for smashing Peter Driscoll's skull into the sidewalk, his most recent crime, is harsh. This time, Cole will have to choose between prison and Native American circle justice. He will live either behind bars or in isolation for one year. Cole chooses circle justice, but in the first days of his banishment to a remote Alaskan island, he is mauled by a mysterious white bear and nearly dies. Will the attack of the spirit bear destroy Cole's life or save his soul? Seems a little wild to have a kid, like 15? Have a 15 year old live in the wilderness for a year by themselves? Like, is this a thing? Does this actually happen? I don't know but I remember it being really good. The next Ben Michelson book is Countdown. Right there. When NASA selected Elliot to be the first teen in space, he eagerly anticipated the day he would board the space shuttle Endeavor. After intense preparations, Elliot never expected anything to go wrong on his voyage, but when danger threatens, the only contact he has via shortwave radio is with Vincent, a Maasai boy in Kenya. The two can't agree on anything. When the Endeavor makes an emergency landing on the coast of West Africa and Elliot's life is hanging in the balance, can he and Vincent reconcile their cultural differences and become friends? I mostly remember about this book um, that um, Elliot cheats during his training. So we'll, this one, I'm, I don't know if it will hold up, but I'm hoping it does. A book that I almost forgot to put in this stack until I was like, kind of packing stuff up, to be honest. The True Confessions of Charlotte Doyle by A.V. A Newberry Honor Book. The Seahawk looms against a darkening sky, black and sinister. Manned by an angry, motley crew at the mercy of a ruthless captain, the rat-infested ship reeks of squalor, despair, and mutiny! Exclamation point. It is no place for the lone passenger, 13-year-old Charlotte Doyle, yet for her there is no turning back. 
At first, a trapped and powerless young girl, Charlotte dares to become the center of a daring and deadly voyage that will challenge her courage, her loyalties, and her very will to survive. Which, uh, honestly, that's that's what I remember it. This one, I think, will be a super fun reread. Um, I tend to love books where characters are put in situations where they aren't, like, meant to be according to society. And this is probably one of the books that kicked that off. The final book in my stack is Esperanza Rising. You can pretend it says Rising underneath the library sale sticker by Pam Munoz Ryan. And this one doesn't really have a summary on the back. And I don't really remember a whole lot about this book other than that Esperanza's family um, they're migrant workers, and I remember one of the major impacts of this book for me being that it was kind of my first introduction to the Spanish language, and my assignment <laughs> while reading this for Mrs. Gerard's class was making my own little glossary of Spanish words. So I think of the stack, this one is the one that I remember the least. And maybe that means it should be my next pick. What do you think? Are there any books that you remember reading in sixth grade that were impactful to you that you wish that you could reread? Um, are there any of the ones here in my stack that were super impactful for you? Let me know in the comments because, you know, engagement. And for now, I think that will be good enough. I'll see you guys later. Bye. This one smells really old.